Hi everyone and welcome to a new Let's Play series for Imperator Rome. Uh, today we're going to play a little bit differently and uh, I'm going to start by going through what we uh, are using for a version of the game. Uh, we are playing on uh, Marius 2.0.3. Uh, we don't uh, have any uh, mods activated or any DLC content. Uh, we are uh, going to start a new game and um, I'm gonna explain what uh, uh, we are going to do differently today. Uh, we are gonna uh, set us up with uh, an interesting challenge uh, and we're gonna play as one of the nations that uh, I haven't seen uh, too many videos been uh, made for. Uh, we are going to play as Luonia here in the north and uh, it's situated uh, pretty far from uh, the main uh, uh, countries of the game, like Rome. And uh, it's also uh, relatively uh, weak in comparison to Rome. Uh, most of the countries of uh, Northern Europe are pretty small and weak. Uh, we start with a population of uh, 16. Um, just for comparison, Rome uh, starts the game with a population of almost 400 of uh, different uh, fates, but 291 of them are Roman. Uh, similar uh, thing uh, with their neighbors, which are also pretty big. Macedon is very big, uh, one of the biggest ones in the game. Uh, the Antigonid Kingdom is huge. Uh, but we're gonna do a few interesting strategies to uh, be able to grow our population by more than tenfold in a f uh, short uh, time span. And our goal is to create a big northern empire uh, that uh, expands southward. And uh, Ceres aims to culminate in a great war where we challenge Rome for the world dominion. And uh, that will end the series uh, in either uh, a victory or defeat. Hopefully we're gonna win, but uh, I'm not making any promises. It's gonna be an interesting attempt. Uh, so I haven't actually played uh, uh, that far yet, but I have uh, played uh, Asluoni a couple of times to figure out what the best strategies are. The reason why I've chosen Luonia is uh, uh, primarily because uh, uh, I live in what's uh, today uh, is this part of uh, Luna called Kung Hele. Today it's uh, where Gothenburg lives, which is where uh, where I uh, am from. And uh, we're gonna uh, create a city here, uh, equivalent of Gothenburg, and another a lot of other interest, uh, good cities. And we're gonna take over most of what's today Sweden and uh, expand southward. So without any further ado, uh, we're going to start the game. So uh, this is actually the third time I've tried to record this series. Uh, the first two attempts uh, didn't really um, get a good output. So uh, it, uh, it's, uh, if you have seen the first attempt, uh, this might be a little bit uh, of... Uh, uh, repetitive overview, but uh, we're gonna go through the studies uh, again. Uh, Leonia uh, is um, uh, one of the tribes in the game that started off as a migratory nation. Uh, we are not a settled tribe, but uh, we have the ability to migrate, and this is the great strength. If we look at the, uh, the description of uh, what a uh, migration means, is that uh, a migration can be set in any controlled location. Settling will turn all migration units into tribesmen of your culture and religion, regardless of their present occupation and creed. What that means is that, uh, first of all, everyone will become tribesmen in an area that uh, you have chosen to migrate from, because uh, uh, tribesmen are a migratory type of occupation. You can't be on the move and uh, be a nobleman or citizen, you live as a tribesman. But you also convert 
uh, all the population to your uh, religion and your culture uh, and this happens instantly and this is the great strength of uh, using a migration uh, focused um, uh, tribe in the game uh, most nations lack this um, a, a great mechanic and if it's done right it can be very powerful and it can uh, help you convert l big chunks of the map to your culture and creed and that way uh, we can grow our, uh, our kingdom and uh, eventually challenge the big guys by snowballing into a um, huge population so we're going to start with selecting uh, the province of you and we're going to move uh, the population here we are going to basically uh, move move most uh, people here we're gonna and then uh, we're gonna choose one of these regions to colonize um, both of these have a population of three and they all have tribesmen but the difference is that Ron has uh, a, a tribesmen of the American uh, culture which is our culture while uh, Tividia has uh, Suwane culture and these are the ones that we want to start colonizing so we're gonna colonize and then uh, with Tividian under our control we can move uh, the Suwone population uh, from Tividia and settle them in uh, you so uh, what will happen now is that when I uh, start migration it will turn uh, all of the population including the Suwone into our culture but I'm gonna move a little, a little more people before I do that. So now everyone, uh, every province has uh, one population uh, left. So I start migration, and now we have uh, a seven uh, thousand strong uh, migrational horde army, and this is an army like any other. It can wage war and conquer territories. It can also do interesting other things like uh, plundering cities while you move into a territory or raise a city and which can be, be very beneficial but also a little bit risky since that will often trigger war with the nation you are um, uh, ravishing. We're gonna settle in you and then we're gonna settle in Rana. Speed it up a little bit. And um, we actually want uh, that uh, big chunk of population. So we're gonna settle everyone and then migrate again from uh, Rana. Settle one guy. And then we have. Uh, emptied most of the lands except uh, one population for each uh, uh, each province uh, what we want to do now is that we want to find areas to, uh, that uh, has a high population that we are able to settle in and we want to uh, take advantage of this big uh, gray area that uh, isn't controlled by any nation we want to settle there and uh, basically we're gonna convert uh, the people in these areas to our culture and creed through the mechanics of migration. Uh, while we wait for them to move down the uh, continent, we're gonna call on an omen. And we're gonna call for the one that uh, boosts the monthly ruler popularity. Game. And we are going to perform divine sacrifice so we can uh, get a faster recovery of our stability. Um, when we do a migration, it uh, costs stability and uh, 7.2 instability for each time you migrate. And um, sometimes we want to do a lot of migrations in a short span of time to move the population and it can drain the stability severely. So, um, 
it's good to uh, make divine sacrifice to offset that. Uh, but it also costs a lot of uh, our political influence, which is uh, good to have. And we're gonna put our uh, leader on scheming influence, which will uh, cost a little bit of popularity hit each month. But that will be offset by the fact that we call down an omen to uh, boost the popularity. So we will create an equilibrium force. Um, this time round, uh, this area has been emptied of people. They have started to move down the continent and abandon their lands. And um, in the long run we will try to settle these areas when we have grown our population a little bit. You can see that they are moving down the continent in uh, the southeastern direction. So they, I think they will uh, try to settle somewhere in Central Europe. Somewhere around there. That's the first promise. Uh, but we're gonna concentrate on this uh, uh, general area. It has some good uh, uh, radiance with uh, tradable goods. But what we want mostly out of this is to find uh, ways to boost the population. And ideally you want to settle in areas with 5 or 6 in population. There are a few examples of areas with uh, higher population than that, but most of the time you will find uh, uh, pretty low populations. Uh, 4 or 5 is uh, the best you can hope for most of the time. So we will um, take over a few of these areas. And uh, we're gonna start with these three actually. And then we're gonna uh, take our money and we start moving people into the biggest uh, populated areas here. Yeah, I don't really care, they can do it to do that. Yeah. Alright, so. This area is pretty good. It has some uh, free men and citizen. Uh, the, they are not movable uh, types of population, so it's good to take this province, which can't move the most, uh, some of the population, instead, um, instead of an area that doesn't have these types of movable population. Tribesmen and slaves can be moved, so it's better to move people out of Mycia into Dulcia than uh, trying to do the other way around. So we're gonna start with uh, filling this area up with as many of our uh, non-culture as we can. So this is uh, the most we could. Currently uh, we have um, made so the majority culture is in Yavanovic. We only have five Americans in the area currently but we will move these guys and settle them and that might just create the majority for us yes all right so um we got 19 population and a good thing to know is that you can at the most move 20 people out of the province in a migrational horde so if you have more than uh, 19, you won't be able to convert uh, the entire population. Some will be left behind, and sometimes that's the uh, of the culture that's not your own. So we're gonna sell for 19 and start moving. And just like that, we have converted a great chunk of the area to our culture. Uh, boosting our um, culture's uh, size and population a lot. And then we move to the next area to repeat, repeat the process. Uh, we're gonna take over some of the smaller areas as well. Uh, 
So now uh, w it will start to cost a little bit of money and we are starting to run a little bit low. So we're going to try to find ways to boost our economy a little bit. We're going to start with going to trade menu and unblock the surplus so we can start selling a little bit of our wood to other nations. We're also going to set up some imports here. We're gonna do uh, livestocks. A lack of anything better. We're gonna leave that there for now. And then we're gonna go um, see which area is, has the highest population. This one has four, and three is the Vanwicks. This has three Istavan Wicks as well. Alright, we're gonna take this one and start moving people in here. settle most of them and, uh, and then we start migration uh, now we're gonna see if we actually miss out on some in this case we actually did uh, one is the one week remains there and one is the one week there so this demonstrates how you don't actually want to override the 20 limit uh, we converted most of them, but not all of them. But um, it doesn't matter too much. We want to make uh, a lot of different migrations here, so uh, they will uh, go into the next uh, round. Right, so we ran out of money there, unfortunately, so we'll have to wait a little bit. Alright, we will sacrifice some political influence to gain some uh, centralization and also an extra population in uh, Galtigotia. So that would be good. We will actually wait a little while, then we will move uh, two of the Istavanoviks at the same time. And then we are going to do another migration. them in half, settle five. Now we should be majority. Yeah, so we will start moving. All right, um, let's see if we care about this area. It has some good um, goods. However, we don't really have any other province that produce the same type of thing so we don't get a surplus for trade so we're gonna leave that area for now and we're gonna move on to uh, the next uh, round of populated areas so 
this one is good, it has six. We're gonna actually... We might not actually colonize. Save some money. This way. Right, so this area has four, uh, six of our, uh, that's not our culture. We're gonna settle half of them. So now we're at the uh, capacity and it's uh, our culture. Uh, we got a surplus of um, a few. Um, we could move um, about three more. So we uh, move two from there. That might be good enough. So we start migration again. All right. So now we got pretty big chunk of our population on move. And uh, we got forty-five people. That's not in uh, a state of migration we're gonna take half of these guys and uh, move them up north to settle in our own uh, con uh, territories and then uh, the other one will start to colonize further in this uh, direction We're gonna take and colonize this one. And then we're gonna settle uh, in the other territories. So now we got a small buffer, we can sell some salt, that's nice. I think we actually got uh, a lot of salt, we got uh, at least one more radian with salt, that's good. But we're gonna save that uh, for later and see which um, area we're gonna try to um, migrate from next. I think this one could be pretty good. We're gonna use this one. So we're gonna move the people to in Isala and start to start to um, move some pops so we can uh, make a new uh, migration. Money is uh, pretty low right now, so it could be good to wait a little bit longer before we start to move people. In the meantime, these guys are arriving. Uh, Ferruria can take nine. So we're gonna split them in half and settle six. Move the rest to get to go to. Eventually I want to fill up every radiant to the maximum capacity. But that will take some time. Alright, we're gonna look here now to um, move some pops. Um, we're gonna take this to Vanwick there, and yeah, Vanwick here, this to Vanwick there. We don't really want to lose provincial loyalty actually, so we have to sacrifice some money. That means we only have 
the build to move uh, four at the moment. But that might be okay. Since we uh, are coming up on uh, mostly empty promises now. Alright, so we got uh, four Americans, six is the Van Wick. We actually got nine is the Van Wick in total. So they are the major cultures. So we need uh, actually five more of our own culture uh, in order to migrate uh, this uh, area. So that's uh, not great. It will cost a little bit of money. So um, now we actually uh, there were actually a movement, uh, which isn't uh, ideal, but we're gonna take that and start the migration. So 19 people have turned now into our culture, and then um, we're gonna settle this province and uh, move on to the next area. So we gain a lot of money from uh, the different uh, trade goods we sell, so that's great. Alright, I think I'm gonna end the episode here. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like, uh, don't forget to um, push the bell icon and subscribe and hit the like button. And I will see you in part 2. Thank you.